back-to-back -back seasons in 2012 and 13 for USC, looking for their first Sweet 16 since Lisa Leslie and Tina Thompson were on the same team back in 1994. We are underway. USC in their home gold, the Cardinal and gold. Well, Kansas is in their road reds. Oh, this crowd is fired up early. Mayberry starts on Juju Watkins. Padilla, one of three Ivy League transfers on the starting, or in the starting lineup for SC, Rhea Marshall, the center. Well too strong on that first jumper, and Kansas clears. Our Capital One starting lineup for you today for Kansas. Four seniors and a true freshman, Mayberry, Kurzgeter, Franklin, and Jackson, all seniors, and the true freshman, Samaya Nichols, the freshman, who is the leading scorer for Kansas. And the and block shot early against 6'6", Jackson. That is going to be a matchup to watch for. 6'4", Marshall for USC, 6'6", Jackson for Kansas. And the offensive foul on the screen against the Jayhawks, that's against the true freshman, Nichols. And they don't want to see her get in any no kind doubt. of foul trouble. 15 points a game for the true freshman. Got to have her on the floor. And for SC, Juju Watkins, their leading scorer at 27 a game. Padilla, Forbes, and Davis all coming from the Ivy League. One year to play here at SC. And Rhea Marshall, the only returning starter from a year ago, is Juju Watkins puts in her first shot of the game, a three. And that's a good sign. She has been cold from deep. Over the last five games, Juju Watkins, three of 26 from three point. The hot start bodes well. Davis reaching in there to poke it away, and Padilla and the Trojans come away with it. Forbes short on the jumper, and I think that was deflected. I think Kansas might have got a piece of that. Lindsey Gottlieb, the head coach for USC, just recently named one of the Warner Ladder Naismith Women's Coach of the Year finalists, one of four. Guided USC to their first number one seed for the first time since 1986. Oh, and another baby. bucket. Watch out, Watkins already with a quick five. Yeah, she's been due for a big, big game, and it feels like that. She's cooking already. Always feels good, takes a little pressure off to hit the first couple of shots. Nichols inside. Jackson pulls down the overboard and draws the foul. And that will go against Juju, who makes a lot of big plays defensively. Had four blocks in the first round win against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And she gets called for that first foul. So both freshman stars for these two teams coming away with an early foul. And look at the plus minus with Jackson on the floor and off the floor. The numbers like we've never seen before. Kansas, to have a chance to win this game, Jackson must stay out of foul trouble. And I mean, she can't spend any time on the bench in foul trouble. No question, she is the most valuable player with that size, shot blocking ability. She's three-time Big 12 all-defensive team. But she is prone to get in foul trouble. A oh, beautiful move. Watkins can't hit the three, though. Just so important for Kansas to have some early offensive success in the half court. Mayberry. Watkins went under the screen. She had space, couldn't hit it. She was good from deep in their first round win against Michigan. Forbes on the deck, muscling up the shot. No good. And Jackson snags the board. And Forbes is... Rushing things a little bit. The fifth year senior started at Cal, went to Harvard, and came back here as Jackson knocks down the face up jumper. Great start for Jackson. Four rebounds already, four points. Mayberry trying to lock up Watkins. Watkins with the move, though, blows by the defense and the weak side as well. I like to say she glides by. It looks effortless. <laughs> it really does. Just a, a graceful athlete with the ball in her hands. Beautiful. Backdoor cut. Here's Geeter had it. And is fouled by Padilla. What a pass to get that set up. 
Juju Watkins already with seven points. The hard crossover. I mean, it was over before the crossover, right? Just set that thing up beautifully. Well, how many moves can she make on one possession? Move by the defense and then the crossover to get to the hoop. So Watkins and Jackson have all of the points for their teams so far. As Kiersgeter, this is the first foul shooter. The 5'11 super senior out of Sand Springs, Oklahoma. What a career she has what had. KU's all-time leader in three-point field goals has made 270 she, in her five-year career, Mary. And she needs to get some open looks and get it cooking from distance. Had nine points, nine boards, four steals in the first round. Watkins post up, double, leaves it for Marshall. Beautiful basketball. Size Juju differential, all, Mary. That just invert things, put Juju down low. Take advantage of a mismatch. Mayberry gets the start on Juju, just five foot seven. Juju is six foot two. So a big size advantage for Juju on the post up. Tipped by Juju and stolen. Back to Pans. I mean, she's a solid six two, defending out in the perimeter. Here's Padilla, thought about it. Now gets it to Forbes in the corner. Forbes pulls it, drills it. Puts three fingers in the air. Missed her first couple. That was a big hit. Coach Brandon Schneider said we must hold Forbes under 20. Let Juju get hers, but everybody else at their average or less. The defense for SC coming up big. Eight points off turnovers to none for Kansas Mayberry. Pull up jumper in the paint. I love the shot. Experience. Take what the defense gives you. This first five minutes has been fun. A lot of times there's adrenaline and nerves, but it feels like both teams playing well. Juju slicing in. Doesn't get a call, and Kansas defense will hold. That is the question, and no one has unlocked that key yet. And she has come out with that look in her eyes. She put up 51 points earlier this season at Stanford against that powerful front line of Cam Brink and Kiki Uriofen. She has scored or assisted on nine of SC's first 12 points. And I'll say this, scoring 42 against Colorado. Just as impressive. Franklin stays hot. Beautiful leaner off window is good. Just a beautiful job coming out of the timeout. Just continue, just calm down. They got down by 10 against Michigan and came roaring back. And they switch up to zone. USC has not seen a lot of zone. They certainly did work on it the other day. And hit Juju in the short corner. Forbes left open. Can't drill the three. Great job by Jackson running the floor, but Aki Wafo. Getting back, 6'6", six, six, big, running the floor defensively. Juju loses the handle, Kurskeeter pulls away. Kansas will push. Mayberry, pull up, leaves it short. Juju has the board. And Juju raises her hand up, she needs a sub. She's got a scratch on the right side of her face. She went down, lost the ball on the last possession. Check by Mayberry. Double team coming to Juju, just two on the shot clock. Forbes has to let it go, hits rim, but Kansas and Mayberry take it away. Can't say enough about how experienced this group is for Kansas. Even their freshman has played a lot of minutes. Cobbins on the floor. She was outstanding against Michigan. Cross court, Mayberry feet set. That leaves the three short. Forbes on Franklin has the size advantage, rises over the top but won't go. This USC team is big. Four of the five starters, six feet or taller. 
Kansas has got some quick guards that counter with that speed. Jackson working on 6-6, Akunwafo. Got her off her feet. She did collect her own miss, but Akunwafo is there to bother. Strong and steady without fouling. And then a late foul, and that will be number two on Juju. Juju Watkins, seven points in the first five minutes, but now picks up her second foul here in the first quarter. And she had asked for a breather a few I think minutes it's, ago. It's because of the scratch on the right side of her face. The third knee coming up to her head. I know she was adjusting that signature bun. But how long will Gottlieb leave her outstanding oh. freshman on the floor? Rhea Marshall, watch out! Watch out! She goes with a finger roll and misses. I thought she might dunk it. She can. I wonder if Marshall was thinking dunk time. Great steal. Marshall just jumps it. And now we're off to the races. Maybe thinking about it a little too much. It just... Misses the layup. Gets it on the lob. And she finishes this one. I love that SC goes right back to Marshall. She makes the defensive play. Can't finish. They go right to her. Yeah, wipe the memory, right? Marshall, the 6'4 junior. One of the best shot blockers in USC history. Number three on the all-time block list. But get the steal on the last possession. Here's Kansas trying to answer. That's Samaya Nichols, the Jayhawk freshman, five-star recruit for Coach Brandon Schneider. Kayla Williams on the floor for Juju Watkins has really played quality minutes the last four to six weeks. Coming in, making just giant plays defensively, big shots offensively. Deny Papa shot the clock onto the floor. Franklin loses the handle. And the shot clock violation. The defense for SC active on that possession. So you mentioned Kayla Williams onto the floor, the 5'7 senior out of Los Angeles. Number four for the Trojans. This is an experienced lineup for SC. Padilla, another senior, and the three ball. She just sits out there beyond the three, waits for the ball. She's always ready. Kansas hit three of their first seven shots. They're 0 for 5 cents. Papadopoulos tries to spin away from Marshall. And another defensive play by the junior. Freya Marshall, really the quarterback of the defense for USC. A year ago, a finalist for defensive player of the year. One of three finalists. Her block number's not quite the same as a year ago, but a better defender and staying on the floor much better than she did a year ago. And there's no question. Franklin will pull the jumper. Rolls off the rim, and now Papadopoulou, fighting for the rebound, will pick up the personal. That is just the second team foul on Kansas. With 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. So the Trojans, if they choose, with their largest lead of the game, can play for the final shot here in the first. This is a big defensive possession for the Jayhawks. They had it within three, a little 5-0 run by USC. Can they get a stop? No Juju on the floor with two personals. So Padilla will pull the three. That was deep. And now three. I don't think Kansas will get a very good look. Mayberry hurls it, and that will be the end of the first quarter. The Trojans came out on fire, cooled off for a bit. Lincoln Riley, the football coach, uh, spending the evening here. Boy, the number that really stands out is six turnovers already for Kansas and 13 of the 17 points. And another see off turnovers. Another one coming there, Raya Marshall getting up, deflecting that. 
And Juju Watkins back into the game with those two personals. And Lindsay Gottlieb has mentioned that she trusts Juju and her basketball IQ. She had two quick personals against Stanford in the first quarter in that game where she had 51. And she let her go. And Juju smart enough not to pick up number three in the first half. Marshall, jumper left open, too strong. Juju, risky. Got the O board, kicks it to Williams. That thing had some side spin on it. And then a collision, Juju goes down, holding her mouth. Crowd not happy with the freshman taking a shot to the face. I'm going to say really not happy. I'm going to elevate that call. <laughs> really, really not happy. <laughs> Poked away Another again. Turnover. The turnovers for Kansas have been a bugaboo. Forbes pull up three is nails. The points off turnovers have absolutely crushed Kansas so far them. in this game. 16 to nothing. Back in Los Angeles, 20 to nine, USC's largest lead of the game. And in the timeout, they took a look at Juju Watkins, came away clutching her face. It's under review. And we bring in Lisa Maddenly, our ESPN rules expert, officiated 18 final fours. Lisa, what can you tell us about uh, the contact to the face of Juju Watkins? Hey guys, I, I think this is unnecessary contact, if not excessive. Uh, look at the high elbow. It's hard contact. It's in the face, and it's an unnatural move. And I believe that this will be upgraded. Uh, there was a no call Ooh. on the floor, but I think this is at least an intentional foul. Uh, you are exactly right, Lisa. Thank you. Our officials today: Brian Hall, Alicia Murray, and Ife Inwa, Ife Seals, saying that will be upgraded to intentional. Foul excessive, severe or extreme contact to the face. Well, that will be called against Yvette Mayberry, the 5'7 senior. And the second team foul here in the quarter. So Juju Watkins with seven points. Her first trip to the foul line tonight. And this is a player that has a special gift of drawing contact and getting to the free throw line, Mary. Uh, no doubt. As you see what the rule book has to say. Boy, what a luxury to have Lisa to just walk you right through it. So Juju Watkins has been to the foul line this year 253 times, one of the nation's leader. And she is an 84% foul shooter. And the first one rolling out. Juju Watkins averages seven made free throws a game. So every game she starts, she's already got seven points on the board and the rest is uh, coming from other areas, but does a spectacular job of getting into the body, handling the contact and getting herself to the free throw line. And also getting the other team into a whole lot of foul trouble. That's the thing that goes, I think, unnoticed is that yes, she gets points at the foul line because she gets fouled, but it also weakens the defense tremendously because they don't want to try to block her shot when she gets up so high and, and she has that ability to get in your body. Juju will pull from three. Oh, wow, Juju, that was deep. She's feeling it. We haven't seen that lift in the three probably since before the Pac-12 tournament. Her second made three here in the first half. Kansas, no points in over six minutes. Nichols changes that. An and one opportunity for the freshman. And this is exactly what the spectacular freshman from Overland Park, Kansas does. She's six foot, she's strong. She does such a great job of finding seams, being powerful. Look at her handle the double contact right and left and getting herself to the free throw line and makes the shot. A lot of talk about the outstanding freshman nationally, and Samaya Nichols has to be right there in that conversation. Six foot, true freshman out of Overland Park, Kansas, a five star recruit, highest ranked recruit for Brandon Schneider in his ninth year at Kansas. Chose to stay home. And is averaging over 15 points per game, has the most freshman points for Kansas since 1979. Three ball, another one for SC. This one from Padilla. Just Padilla cannot get the ball with that much time. She will just hit dagger after dagger. 
Already six made threes for USC. They're shooting 60% from deep. Nichols sees Marshall, can't get the grip, and another turnover against Kansas. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. So a 15-point lead for SC. Padilla, corner three ball, short. Marshall, skies up for the rebound, and USC will get another crack at it. Great job by Rhea Marshall, kicking it out. The shot's not oh, there. from deep. Oh, too strong. Mary, that would have brought the house down if Juju would have hit that one. <laughs> she just kind of smiles a little bit. Yeah, you said you think Juju's yeah. feeling it. Already double figures. She's got 11 points. She's four of seven, two of three from long range. Just taking that shot really indicates how good she is feeling. Down low, Nichols. Beautiful pass. Good pass, good screen action to get Nichols open on the block. Nichols. Kansas needs stops, and they need to take care of the ball and get shots at the basket. Good fake by Forbes, trying to Great kick defense. it down to Caitlin Davis. Poked away and last touched by SC. So Brandon Schneider in Kansas is the 2022 Big 12 Coach of the Year. He's guided Kansas to three straight 20 win seasons. They've been in the postseason all three years in 2022. Made a run in the NCAA tournament to a round of 32. Last year, the WNIT champs, and that's his wife, Allie, with her two boys, Cash and Cole. They coached together at Emporia for seven seasons, and now she coaches the boys in AAU, sixth and eighth graders. And another turnover on the offensive foul. Yeah, these turnovers just... Well, they have bitten Kansas nine turnovers here, and we still have 6.43 to go in the first half. And they just crush you. One, because you're giving the ball away, but you're not getting shots at the basket, so it just adds up. If you look at this box score, so often there's a couple different categories, but it's 16 to nothing right now. Points off turnovers. Kansas has yet to score a point, while SC has 16 of their 27. And a stoppage in play right now. Not sure what they're taking a look at. Looking at the clock here. How about UCLA comes back to win that game? Two games going on in LA tonight, UCLA and USC. <laughs> well, they put the highlight of USC going up by four late against Creighton here inside USC. Yeah, UCLA, yeah. <laughs> Loud booze at the rival US, UCLA took a four-point lead. We call it the crosstown rivalry, and it is for real. Gotta love that. USC trying to follow the UCLA footsteps and get into the Sweet 16. Taylor Bigby on the floor for USC. Here's Jackson. Spins away. Can't hit the first one. Grabs her own miss. Lots of traffic. And the whistle will blow against SC. Even if you know that spin is coming, they were not able to just go foot to foot, be strong with it, and not give her a lane. Kea Padilla picks up the foul. That's her second. And so she's going to have to take a seat. And Padilla already with two made threes in this game. Will be off the floor along with Rhea Marshall, who has been active. Four points, two boards from Marshall, but... Clarice Akunwafo, what a luxury to have a McDonald's All-American at 6-6 on your bench available. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Thursday. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TBS and CBS. For more information on the tournament, games, and times, go to NCAA.com. And one of the sites will be right here in Los Angeles, just up Figueroa at uh, Crypto.com Arena. It has been busy here in L.A. Sure the Lakers and the Clippers had a double header the other night just down the road. Juju 
Can't get the jumper to go. Jackson was open, ran the floor well. Opportunity knocking here for Kansas. Nichols, that one rimmed in and out, and Juju grabs the board. All the turnover troubles, that would have brought it to 10. Back to the zone. Uh, Juju goes a right to Kiersgeter. She get does right not, at her with no, the two does fouls. not contest Juju. I think she heard the footsteps and didn't want to get her shot blocked. And instead, they hand it right back over to USC, the 11th turnover here in the first half. Just says, nah, I don't think so. Three seconds. It's a Kansas team that does not turn the ball over very much. And I think you're right, Mary. I think Kierskeeter would have known that was Juju with two fouls. You gotta go right at her in the open floor. Skip past too much air underneath it. Big B. It's it to Forbes. Now challenge Jackson in the lane. And Jackson comes away with a block. Averages over three per game. One of the best in the nation. Oh, they missed Nichols inside. She was wide open. Nichols outside now. Big and shots. Says, That's cool. I'll take a three. And closes the gap to 10. Dan Sensu, and maybe he's just thinking about his life in the NFL coming up this fall. Projected only, to be the number one overall pick, Mary. I can only hope he's a Chicago Bear. <laughs> As Mary, the native of Chicago, <laughs> chimes in. Here's Juju with two personals on the floor. Kicks it to Forbes. That one rattles out. Akunwafo. Trying to tip it, but Jackson clears it. We That's a good battle right there between Jackson and Akunwafo. We've talked so much about Jackson's foul trouble. She already has nine rebounds, four of them offensive, and three assists. Oh, oh and there's the big block. Akunwafo getting off the ground in a hurry for the block, but Kierskeeter has it. Thought about the jumper. Now Nichols will take it. And a one-on-four situation for Williams. SC, no points over the last four minutes. Here's Forbes, changes that in a hurry. The seventh made three in the first half for the Trojans. I mean, that's a five, six point swing right there. Kansas could have cut it under 10, instead it blows up again. There's Franklin, the lefty, had 22 in the first round win against oh. Michigan and goes off glass, so crafty. Yeah, she's just so good using the glass. You feel like Kansas, after giving away 16 points off turnovers, should be down a lot more than 11. Here's Williams. The three ball attempt, no good. And Kierskeeter at 5'11, that guard, she is active on the glass. Jackson running the floor. Often oh, the play. Gets back, deflects it away, and the Trojans have it. Um, right trying back. to go behind the back and just loses the grip. Three super seniors on the floor for Kansas. Mayberry, a fourth year senior, the daughter of Lee Mayberry, and her shot won't go. Juju left open, had a good look, wouldn't go. Davis. Flips up a jumper short, and USC with another O board. Forbes from deep. And SC is just raining threes here inside the Galen Center. The eighth deep jumper of the game. When you're trying to pull a big upset, you cannot give up second and third opportunities to a team as talented as USC. Nichols trying to spin away from the rugged defender, Davis. But no go. Kansas in this zone. They've given up a lot of threes. Forbes with the left. 
Francis has it and will push. Oh, beautiful pass. Karis Peter to Jackson. That was gorgeous. Jackson's been doing an outstanding job of consistently running the floor every single time. She has got great speed at six foot six, extremely athletic. And didn't get discouraged because a couple times you don't get it just every single time, busting it. The hand's moving full speed, though, to take that from Kiersgitter, and she put that on a dime off the bounce. Man, this is just gorgeous basketball. It really is. This is an eight seed, Mary. What's the play like this? Just your big run in the floor, running it hard, catch it, finish it, don't put it on the floor. Easy buckets, hard to come by for Kansas. She may have traveled, but no matter, as India Otto is helping with the call. <laughs> What a moment for India Otto. Oh my gosh. Walk on, given a scholarship years ago, and now in her fifth year at USC, getting five points in that first round matchup against Texas a and Corpus Christi. Huge ovation as Kansas now with their turnover, and Franklin gets in there to draw contact, and she'll head to the line. She just lives in attack mode. Kaya Franklin, known as Z KB. Kai Buckets, and boy, she is, is such a good handle. Had a great conversation today with Brenda Van Luggen, who has, of course, covered the, the Big 12 for so many years, was at K-State for their, their pod. Just talking about this Kansas team, and Franklin in particular, the five years, all the starts, what she means to this program. Top five all time on the scoring list at Kansas. And past her teammate, Holly Kiersgeeter, is number six in that last game. They've gone back and forth. The two fifth year seniors that came in together. They're doing a really nice job in this zone. Forbes, deep three, won't go. Final possession if the Jayhawks want of the half. Only down 12. SC's, All those giveaways. SC's defense has been phenomenal. It really has. SC could have buried him early and did not do it. Nichols, three-point opportunity. That was tough. One of the things Brenda Van Leggen talked about this afternoon was this is a Kansas team that will not go away. And if Jackson can stay on the floor, they've got a chance. And this terrific freshman just takes it right at the guts of this defense and comes away with two and a chance for three. Nichols so athletic. Six feet, strong. She went right at the six foot one Taylor Bigby. Got into the body and earned the three point opportunity. And she rolls it in. So SC has just a bit under five seconds to make something happen. Here's Juju weaves through three, lets it go, and off the back iron. And so at halftime, Kansas has to be thrilled that they only are down by nine after the way SC's defense held them. But SC 23 and 0 this season when leading at halftime, and they lead by nine here on their home floor. Winner to the Sweet 16. The SC team that averages 21 three-point attempts a game. They've already taken 19. So just imagine how kind of out of their comfort zone against Oregon, up in Oregon, they took 31. They're kind of on track for that again. Juju rises and fires immediately and hits over the 5'7 Mayberry. Yeah, that 6'2 is legit, and the rise gives her so much more. She's up to 13 points, averages 27. Franklin kicks it out to Mayberry, and she answers the Juju jumper with one of her own from deep. And if you're Kansas, you just take a deep breath, and you feel a whole lot better as you run back on defense, and you run right back into that 2-3 zone, and it protects Jackson from getting into foul trouble as well. Jackson had 11 rebounds in the first half, her career-high 22. Ball tipped away, but into the hands of Marshall, so she'll just pull the short jumper, and it goes in. She thought about it. Well, she has raised her field goal percentage 
10% from a year ago. Here's Kurzgieter, that has brilliant jump shooter, knocks in another one in her illustrious career. It's got to happen. She must be offensive-minded and look for openings. Four starters in double figures in their round one win against Michigan. Kurzgieter, the only one that didn't. She had nine. Davis, the lefty, her jumper is off the mark. Opportunity knocking right here for Kansas. Can you keep digging into this lead? Moving screen, turnover. And that will be called against Zakaya Franklin, the fifth year senior coming to Kansas all the way from Lakeland, Florida, Winter Haven High School. And those are the kind of fouls that are just maddening because the opportunity to just score some points and just continue to feel momentum just goes away. Here's Juju. Lots of red jerseys for the Jayhawks in her space, so she kicks it to Padilla. Now Marshall down low, wide open, takes contact, finishes anyway. And the emergence of Rhea Marshall, it's kind of funny to say that as a junior because she was coming on so strong a year ago. But look at the show, the target, knew she had the size advantage inside, and then Jackson with the late react. And when you want to get a foul, that is not the one you want. You want your money's worth. She did not get her money's worth on that one. That diagonal on the weak side to Marshall. What a weapon against that zone. I'm sure that was diagrammed a number of times in the locker room by Lindsey Godley. Let's review zone offense. <laughs> That's how you draw it up. That whiteboard getting a workout from Lindsey Gottlieb and paying off on that possession. And now Marshall and Jackson tussling in the paint and Marshall will be called for the foul. And this is one thing for Rhea Marshall. This is just her first personal and she knew this matchup against Tiana Jackson was going to be crucial. And she has been able to defend really well without fouling, a sign of maturity in her game. And that's her college career there, coaching career for Lindsey Gottlieb, does not include the two years assistant coach with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Franklin on the move, won't drop, but Jackson with her 13th rebound, and then she finishes eight points now as she nears the double-double. Dynamic on the O-boards. Five offensive rebounds already. Forbes, nice screen from Davis, and she has a lot of space to knock in another three. The ninth made three for the Trojans. That was like Saturday morning at the YMCA. All that time just to line it up. And Forbes, red hot from deep. She's got five made threes on nine attempts. Jackson working on Marshall, the left hand no good. I'm surprised Padilla didn't pull the trigger on that one. Forbes thought about it. And she's already hit five. This time she goes in the lane and uses the loses it. Franklin up ahead of everybody. The southpaw glides in for the fast break bucket. Boy, creating turnovers out of the zone. Then you can just release. Beautiful job just getting down the floor. Just throw it ahead. Easy two points. It's an experience. We can't say it enough. This Jayhawk team, how much they have played together over the last four or five years. Again, the zone, the impact. Nichols going right at Forbes, up and under, and it's good. And it's an eight-point game. Lindsey Gottlieb wants timeout. This zone is bothering the Trojans on offense. Cheryl Miller won a national championship as a freshman here at SC. Jackson denies Davis. She got up quickly to erase that. She's playing with so much more confidence and just with flow than she did against Michigan. So out of the timeout calls, call, called by Gottlieb, SC gets rejected. Kansas trailed by as many as 15. Kurzgieter, the jumper. Watch out. Six-point game. Back in Ann Arbor, Kim barnes Rico and the Wolverines saying, this is exactly what we felt. Juju explodes, takes contact. 
and we'll head to the line. And this is what makes Juju so different. Not the first clutch, the double clutch is what creates the contact. A little hesitation there. One, two, buys herself some time. That's what draws the contact. This is elite. And I think she, a little frustrated she wasn't able to score that. We have seen her finish that so many times. And the real big part about that play is that for Tyana Jackson, that is her third personal. Here with 5.04 to go in the third. And Kansas coach Brandon Schneider will leave her on the floor for now. Juju splits a pair. What are you saving her for, you know? Hard trap. trap. Excellent job by USC to spring that trap in the coffin corner, and Kansas is forced to burn a timeout. Italy, and then to the WNBA, where she became a superstar. The Houston Comets ripping off championships with Tina Thompson. It's nice when your program has that many Hall of Famers in their history. Forbes looking for her sixth three, and she gets it on the move. Why not just pull up, Kinsey? Just love the confidence that she plays with. No hesitation. Jackson double team shuffles her feet. No, they call the jump ball. Possession arrow stays with the Jayhawks. You watch Synergy, you look at the numbers. What does Jackson do when she gets it down low on that block? She's gonna spin and come back inside. That's exactly where Juju Watkins was. SC has pushed this back out to 10. Kansas got as close as six. Kurzgeter up and under, soft touch rolls in. We've talked about it for two games. Michigan first, now USC. She must stay aggressive, hunting shots. We're staying in the zone. Kansas has made their last four shots in a row, keeping alive here on the road. Marshall, pull up jumper, no good. Jackson was in the area, affected it. Davis gets tangled up with Nichols and will be called for the personal. So the winner tonight, playing for a chance at the Sweet 16. Baylor has already punched their ticket to the Sweet 16 in Portland, Oregon. That game will be 5.30 Eastern time from the great Pacific Northwest. Number one, USC, the eighth seed, Kansas. And one, count it. Nichols was scoreless in the first quarter, and she no has exploded. She has. She is up to 15 points and a chance at a free throw on the way. This is what she does best in traffic, handling the contact, gets the shot to go. Rugged, quick, finishes, comes to a team as a super freshman, surrounded by super seniors, juniors, regular seniors, and they just say, you go, we got you. Back-to-back -back fouls against Caitlin Davis. She's got three personals and will sit on the bench. It's a five-point game, the closest that Kansas has been to SC since the four-and-a-half-minute mark of the first quarter. SC led by as many as 15 points. And just built in help everywhere Juju goes. Quick hands by Franklin, gets it out of Juju Watkins' hands, but she recovers. Marshall, the jump hook on the run won't go. Coach Kansas defense, Mary, is just locking him down. Sure is. Mayberry three ball would have been big. Padilla grabs the board. Another three ball rattles out for Forbes. Yeah, they're going to change that call. You are dead on, Mary. Mackenzie Forbes has been huge in this game. She leads all scores with 18 points, six made threes. Long shot goes up. Marshall in there fighting for the board. Padilla, quick trigger. Off the back iron. Another O board. Forbes there. It's a real problem for Kansas. They're giving up long threes, their misses, but they have got to come away with those boards. 
Forbes, that time inside the three-point line, and her pull-up off the mark. And Miss Jackson early. Kansas defense has just locked down SC since that first five-minute mark. Nichols again in the paint. Samaya so Nichols, the true freshman, averaging 15, which leads Kansas. And she has the Jayhawks within one possession. Juju leaves the defense, but the jumper one go. Marshall, her old board not there. Kansas with a chance to tie. It's a 13-4 Kansas run and 7-0 over the last two minutes. Nerves inside the Galen Center. Nichols on Big B. Over the back, Juju Watkins. The crowd does not like the call. It's a hold on Juju Watkins. That's her third personal. She picked up two quickly in the first quarter. The miss goes up. Jackson says, I got this. And over the back, Juju Watkins is trying to swat it away from 6-6. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see a lot of contact on that one. I didn't see a it doesn't, But it doesn't matter. That's what they called, and Juju Watkins has three <laughs> fouls. You are correct on that. So Kansas trails by three. Nichols takes off and is denied. Akunwafo and Bigby both there to leave that jumper off the mark. Yeah, they call her Big C, and she's just like a wall in there. She doesn't get into a lot of foul trouble. Just wall this off. Great help. Stay up. Hands straight up and down. What a difference maker defensively. Five on the shot clock. And another foul against SC. That will go against Padilla. And it's just so important for USC to regain composure. You can't look at the officials and get obsessed with what's happening with them. You have to stay focused on you, what you need to do as a basketball team. So the fifth-year senior, Holly Kurzgieter, calmly sinks the first free throw. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Kurz Geeter drills both foul shots and pulls Kansas to the close, the closest they have been since early in the first quarter. They trail by as many as 15 points, and SC's offense has disappeared. Juju rises, jumper short. Calarice Akunwafo there for the offensive rebound. I like the move to put Juju Watkins in the middle of that zone. That shot will start going down. There's a big gap in there. Jayhawks did not do a great job of locating her. The fourth team foul on Kansas, so next one is in the bonus, but just a minute to go. Juju rises, fires, hits. SC needed that. To say the least. Kansas has outscored USC 22 to 17 here in the third period. Nickel spin move rolls off her hand. Brilliant move, but left it off the mark. Juju crossover in the lane, contact, and she'll head to the line. And once the defense starts backing up, that's when it's advantage Juju Watkins, and you could feel it there. Backing up, backing up. I'm coming right at you. I'm going to the foul line. Double clutch. Juju nails on the first free throw. And how really, for Juju, she just hasn't got there as often as she usually does. This is just her fifth attempt. And it's not a surprise. It's because of the zone. They've just walled her and hand it. Now it's on to you. Now it's on to you. Great team defense, just helping wall off Juju Watkins from all that contact. She's four of six now from the foul line, and Juju with 19 points, the takeaway. Their defense was electric in the first quarter, flying around, and that time coming up with another turnover. And look where Juju is. 
Here I am. Wafo takes the Watkins miss and we'll head to the foul line. I like that adjustment, Mary. I Here's love it. Watkins at 6-2 in the middle of that zone. Because then you got to pinch it, right? Then you have to bring someone high or you got to drop and then you're going to open up your perimeter shooters if you do that. But everybody else they put in the middle has not, you know, they put KD in there, they put Ray there, didn't help. Now Clarice Ockenwafo not a good foul shooter, just 5 of 17 this season. That is 29% for the junior. And she'll bank it in and say thank you very much. But so improved from a year ago. Shot 38% from the floor last year, 62% this year. She is a defensive stalwart for them, future doctor. She has been a big, big time difference maker so far in this ballgame. Splits a pair. It's a 6-0 USC run. Last shot of the quarter for Kansas. Kurzgeter off the back, off the backboard, and that will do it for the third peak, the third peak period. <laughs> Women's basketball, and it is what both are putting on a show here tonight in Los Angeles. Juju Watkins was the national freshman of the year last year as a senior. Well, Samaya Nichols was a five-star recruit. First team all Big 12 and Big 12 all freshmen. Here's Juju in the middle of that zone. Doesn't like it, kicks it out to Padilla. She's wide open and she drills it. But that's what happens. All the attention to Juju, just it, you just take a step off Padilla and she makes you pay. Well, pick your poison for SC. Now they've made 12 threes. They lead by 10. Here's Nichols. Gets it to Kurzgeter. Her three is short. Forbes, deep three. Too strong. Forbes has already matched a career high that she had while playing at Harvard. She did it against Boston University. She's got six. Kurzgeter working on Forbes up and under. And need a better decision. Has numbers if they want. Kurzgeter looks a little tired, slow to get back. Now Forbes, beautiful dime down low. Akunwafu misses the first and the second. And then last off of Akunwafu. But I, love, I love the reaction by the Trojans. They all run up like it's like what volleyball players do. Let's go. It's all right. We got you. Misses the second. And then last off of Clarice. Here's Mayberry in the lane, kicks it out to Franklin. Franklin, the lefty, won't roll in. And Juju with the board. Franklin's been quiet to six points. Watkins right at Jackson. A little too much on that one. Here's Aukun Wafo, and she gets the bucket this time. You could feel the intent on that one, couldn't you, Elise? Lowered the shoulder, said, I'm not missing it. The crowd roaring their approval back to back games here. Attendance just listed 8,941 here for second round action at the Galen Center. They had 8,300 in their win against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Beautiful Wafu, feed. A little too much. She'll get called for the personal. Goes old school. Taps her chest like my, my foul. When's the last time you saw that? The old chant, you fouled, you did it, raise your hand, admit it. She did. Here's Mayberry. Down low, Jackson. And she's now got a double-double, 10 points, 17 rebounds. That's the first points for Kansas in over four minutes. She has really played well and stayed on the floor. Juju fade away jumper. Nope. But another offensive rebound by SC. And then Kurzgeter 
reaches out, gets tangled up with Akun Wafo. Can't say enough about how impactful the zone has been on USC, but it also has enabled them to get 13 offensive rebounds. And USC also with 12 made threes against this zone on 26 attempts. A sweet 16 on the line, just over seven minutes to go. SC has not been to a sweet 16 since 1994. Ball is loose. They say it's tied up. Jump ball, possession arrow. Will go to the Jayhawks. Kansas went to back-to-back -back Sweet 16s, 2012, 2013, but none in the tenure of Brandon Schneider in his ninth year. Mayberry all the way in, blocked Forbes. by Forbes, and then she is fouled. So on the stoppage, USC shows 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. We haven't seen this in, I don't know, the last time, and they get the turnover coming out of it. The attack, the block, Forbes. When you ask her what her goal is, it's to play for a WNBA team this year, and she really understands the challenge to make it happen. Asking the crowd to get loud. This USC team has energized the basketball fans of USC and the community. It was interesting when we talked to the Kansas coaches about, and the players about playing in front of a big crowd. They're like, we do that at Iowa State. We do that at K-State. It will not be impactful for us. They certainly have not seemed rattled it by this bits. crowd of almost 9,000. They have played well, but right now sitting at just 48 points against this USC defense. Love the cut. Juju inside of 12 feet. It's a layup for Juju at that spot. They've started it from the wing cutting, they've started in the high post, and now the cut from the backside to the middle. Juju now at 21 points, eight boards, four assists. Well, tonight after USC Kansas, next at Sports Center with Nicole Briscoe and Zubin Mahenti, and then Rebecca Lobo and Andre Andrea Carter in the studio to break down the night in women's hoops. And Shohei Otani speaks out for the first time since his interpreter was fired in that gambling scandal, plus the NFL offseason meetings cause a stir. With the oh. chain. All that and more on Sports Center with Nicole and Zubin coming up right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. What a block. Davis open, Juju finds her. And Kansas needs to talk about it. SC's lead pushed back out to 14. Some fans out from the student section. Tommy Trojan. Tommy. Tommy can speak better than me at times. I do know that. At the ESPN mic. Little air guitar. The fans absolutely loving this fourth quarter start for SC. They have outscored Kansas 9-2 to, to start the fourth quarter quarter and now Kansas in a 14 point hole and USC can taste it Mary you can tell when they went to the last time out they are feeling it the sweet 16 Forbes goes down yeah, she got it got hit and USC comes away with the ball and she is still down she was grabbing at her face immediately and so the officials are going to come over and take a look. Forbes, number 25. Previous play is under review so for a possible Nichols. intentional foul. And you can see you're swinging that left elbow, trying to clear some space. And connects with McKenzie. McKenzie Forbes, one of the great young women of this game. My goodness, she is such a great young lady with all she's done and getting her degree at Harvard and now coming to USC. Want to make sure she's all right. Lisa Mattingly, our ESPN rules expert, officiated 18 Final Fours and, and now gets to hang out with us. Lisa, what'd you see on that play? We haven't, uh, I haven't seen that play yet. Okay, well, let's roll it for Lisa. Here you go, Lisa. Boy. From this angle. My girl. 
It does come up in an unnatural way. It doesn't look like it's a basketball play there to me. Um, and because it's hard contact, they may decide to go with an intentional foul on this because of the hard contact. To the After face. review of the play here, it's incidental contact. It's a basketball move coming through. Only an incidental contact. So thank you, Lisa. Your officials determining that it was almost on the front swing of her elbow where she clipped the jaw of Mackenzie Forbes. And so they did not elevate it to an intentional foul. Which intentional foul, which is excessive. So we play on. Juju in the middle of that zone again, puts the ball on the deck, takes contact, and then a dangerous play as she goes to the ground and her head lands right near Sabaya Nichols, but she's going to be okay. Puts it on the floor. And that's just a pro move. Do you see her just grab the arm of the defender as she's driving by her and just holds her off? And sacrificing her body on that one as she was airborne and came down pretty hard. Luckily, Nichols wasn't a, about a foot closer to her as her head could have banged on the knee or the leg of Nichols. But Watkins, where she makes her living at the foul line, makes her fifth free throw on seven attempts tonight, and she's up to 22 points. Moving Juju away from the perimeter and into that high post, whether she's cutting or just starting there, has made the difference in this ball game for USC. And USC led by 15, and Kansas whittled it all the way down to a one possession game. They could never take the lead. And now SC back out again by double digits, and they have increased their lead. It is 16, their largest of the game. Curry's Geeter puts the ball on the deck, draws the foul on Padilla. Can't say enough about the difference that Clarice Akunwafo has made in this ball game. They take Ray Marshall out, and just with her size and strength, it has nullified the the Jackson advantage inside. Jump ball, and it will go to USC. Chance to build on this 16-point lead, 5-26 to go. The 6'6 junior out of Englewood, California, playing a whale of a ball game. Doesn't always show up in the statue, just three points, six rebounds, one assist. So now Kansas will switch to player to player. We'll get out of that zone. Down by 16, Juju. Looking for her third three, won't go. Fight for the rebound, and Jackson once again pulling down the rebound. She's got 18 boards. Kansas cannot have empty possessions. They need to come down and score. Three fifth-year seniors on this roster in the starting lineup for Kansas. And a foul called. And that will go against Caitlin Davis. And that's her fourth. So the next one for Caitlin Davis, and she's going to be disqualified. A grad transfer. And our second round top performers. How good was Kiki Irioffen? Absolutely unguardable against Iowa State she among many stars. The line of the day for me, though, is Gina Oriema after the game. We have the best player in America. The numbers say that she is. The stat sheet says that she is. And everyone that watched knows it. Well, it's hard to argue when she puts up Paige Becker's 32, 10, and 6. And then Caitlin Clark with 32 and 8. How about Richardson with a 28 for Duke as they get the big win and are heading to the Sweet 16. Just a couple of more bids on the line to see who's going to head to Oregon and who's going to head to Albany, New York. Juju splits the defense contact first. I did check the weather. It's not going to be raining in Portland, and it's not going to be snowing in Albany. So good news all around. For all of those traveling. That's exactly right. Locations. 
So the Portland Regional, we are in the Portland Three Regional. The number one seed, SC, trying to advance. Number two, Ohio State got beat by Duke. Number four seed, Virginia Tech, got beat by Baylor. So the one and three seeds are left, but three, five, and seven have all advanced. And another SC bucket. They're rolling, Mary. If I mentioned Big C and the job she's doing inside. Nichols right at Okamwapo. It's disrupted, and now Juju snags the board. Uh, just loses it. Right and tipped away, and somehow SC recovers. Hot potato. Lindsey Gottlieb saying, all right, we're good. Slow it down. Time and score. We're ahead by 16, less than four to go. SC has not been to the Sweet 16 since 1994. Forbes puts the ball on the ground and will draw a couple of shots at the foul line. Here's the offensive rebound. Puts it in, 5.7 rebounds. <laughs> Aaliyah Gales, the 5'9 redshirt freshman at Las Vegas, Nevada, is back at practice. And says so she hopes to be able to suit up if this team advances to the Sweet 16, which would be a phenomenal story. The former McDonald's All-American is a senior in high school and is recovering, was able to play, but had a stress fracture that has kept her out of play recently. Another inspirational story for this USC team. India Otto Gales. Gales, of course, surviving that shooting in Las Vegas. Scary, scary times for her and the family, but she is doing great. She's gonna be back and healthy and Ready to suit up for SC if they can advance to the Portland, Oregon Regional. What can you say about Juju Watkins? Just 18 years old, won't turn 19 till July. And coming up here with 23 points so far. And has this USC team back to national prominence. They won the Pac-12 tournament, defeating Stanford. Offensive foul on Juju Watkins. And the thing about Watkins, she started the season, they met number seven, Ohio State. 32 points on 11 of 18 shooting. And that's a charge. Six rebounds, five assists, a block and a steal. And really, we had heard how good she was. And then we saw how good she was. 32 points in your first game against Ohio against State. Against the top 10 team. Yeah, I'd say that that was a welcome to college basketball moment and how good she could be. 51 at Stanford, 40 plus against Colorado. She has showed up. And the thing that I think the national basketball fans really should pay attention to when it comes to this USC team is yes, Juju's the headliner and she's 18 years old and she is breaking all kinds of records and her resume is so deep that she just start to have to cross things off because she's accomplished so much in just one season. But the rest of her team is a very good collection of basketball players. Three grad transfers from the Ivy League that supported her in that game against Stanford when Tar Vanderveer had a game plan of how to shut down Juju and it was Mackenzie Forbes with 26 and Padilla hitting three threes and we've seen Rhea Marshall play huge. Caitlin Davis had 16 rebounds against UCLA in the Pac-12 tournament. So this is not just Juju. But well, we said it all year long. We all need to watch more Ivy League basketball. Clearly, Juju from three. Juju with her fourth made three of the game. She's got 26. LA is Juju's world and we're all just visiting. Franklin looking for the floater and Juju with the rebound. 
She's got a double double 26 points, 10 boards, five assists for Juju. Make it 11. It just clicked in 26, 11, and five dimes. And Forbes, the sharp shooting. The Forbes money list was hot tonight as she had six made threes in this game. Gets tied up on that possession. But this crowd of nearly 9,000 just waiting to put this one in the books. Or as Chick Hearn used to say, in the fridge, Mary. <laughs> Well, you would come here and there'd be like a sewing club up there, Mahjong over there. There was nobody here watching basketball. That has changed. And Mayberry with the three ball. But let's tip our cap to this Kansas Jayhawk squad. <sighs> Juju off window. Another high level shot for the true freshman. Now just a couple shy of 30. He's been over 30 13 times this year. An SC record. Nichols pushing that one up. Aquan Waffle battling for the rebound. And in Waco, Texas, Nikki Collin and her staff trying to put together a game plan. How do we stop Juju Watkins? And SC can taste it now. The crowd on their feet. Mackenzie Forbes started playing college basketball six years ago. Puts her hands in the air. Juju Watkins, a big hug for her coach, Lindsey Gottlieb. They are heading to the Sweet 16. And Juju Watkins, the commitment. USC was 12 and 16, and all she had was the dream that Lindsey Gottlieb could explain to her and the cohesiveness that Lindsey Gottlieb had with the current squad when she first came in. And they have built it from there. And now on to the floor, India Otto, fifth year senior, got a huge ovation with five quick points in the first round win. She hadn't played in a game since December. And now Davis getting tangled up with Tyona Jackson. If that goes against Jackson, that's her fifth. What a great and career. Couldn't agree more. Tyana Jackson, a 6'6 super senior out of East Chicago, Indiana. Averaging just a tick under 13 points and 10 rebounds this year. She will go down as one of the all-time best in Kansas history. Three-time Big 12 all-defense. Hopes to play in the WNBA. Would love to play in Europe. Wants to keep on playing a game she loves. And that is what is so hard about March Madness. Is because when you dream big, it turns into March sadness when you don't advance. And all the memories that she's made loves Coach Brandon Schneider. And the Trojans get the stop and the fans approve. And USC is just not a football school anymore. Women's basketball is officially back. They won the two national championships in 83 and 84. Cheryl Miller, arguably one of the best all time. Auto lets it fly. That doesn't hit rim. Crowd wanted it. <laughs> Lindsey Gottlieb lets out a huge breath and says, we did it. There's your buzzer. The Trojans heading to the Sweet 16 in a city that loves their stars. A new one is Grayson, Los Angeles, Juju, and SC heading to the Sweet 16.